طيب مرحبا يا جماعة أهلا وسهلا فيكم في إيفنت اليوم وإحنا بلقاء فلسطين التقنية أول مرة بنعمل إيفنت مع ناس من غزة فعملنا مع فشكرا دعاء إنك عرفتينا على فيسبوك ديفلوب سيركلز وإن شاء الله هذا الإيفنت يكون حلو يعجبكم عنوان الإيفنت هو بناء تطبيقات الواقع الافتراضي على الإنترنت يعني على الويب أنه نقدر نشوف الـ AR والـ Virtual Reality على البراوزر رح يكون معنا متحدث اسمه فابيان بينوتو هو فرنسي من بل... ساكن ببلجيكا حيحدثنا أكثر بهذا المجال حيعرفنا عن حاله ويحكي أكثر عن هذا الموضوع ويعلمنا كيف نقدر نبني تجربة VR على الإنترنت رح نبلش الإيفنت بدقيقتين آية صوفان سميرتنا باللقاءات رح تعرف عن اللقاءات ودعاء غندور رح تعرف عن فيسبوك ديفلوبر سيركلز بغزة خلينا نبلش مع دعاء أول مرحبا وأهلا وسهلا جميعا أنا دعاء الغندور كوليدر لفيسبوك ديفلوبر سيركل غزة فيسبوك ديفلوبر سيركلز هو برنامج بدأته الفيسبوك بهدف إنه هي تخلق مجتمعات للديفلوبرز تكون منظمة يقدروا يشاركوا فيها ويتعلموا فيها ويناقشوا المواضيع اللي بتعنيهم على الصعيد اللوكالي بإنهم يعلوا الجلوبال سكيل الفيسبوك سيركل غزة بتعمل أنشطة دورية أونلاين وأوفلاين بشكل دوري عندنا جروب على الفيسبوك في حوالي 3000 عضو وحاليا منظمين مع التقنيات مع فعاليات فلسطين التقنية الورك شوب هاي فأهلا وسهلا فيكم آية هلا رح تحكي عن لقاءات طيب مرحبا هلو افريبادي رح احكي بالانجليزي لانه فابين برضو رح احكي بالانجليزي بس اهلا وسهلا فيكم جميعا طيب My name is Aya I work as data scientist at Paltel uh, I am co-founder of Palestine Tech Meetups. Me and Imama, Mufid, and uh, alongside um, 10 more people, I think we founded Palestine Tech Meetups in 2014. All of us graduated from Al Najah National University, and we decided that we need to create something called Palestine Tech Meetups to host a monthly Tech Meetup in Nablus. Uh, moreover, I am Muzilian. Me and Yamama are Muzilian. Uh, we had the opportunity to be mentored at Mozilla San Francisco office. So, yeah, I mean, تكون هاي فرصة تتعرفوا اليوم أكثر على إحدى منتجات أو أشياء موزيلا إذا ما بتعرفوا موزيلا ممكن تتعرفوا عليها بزيادة. Um, ممكن. Okay. من خلال البلوج اللي موجود mozilla.bs we share all our activities that we host for Mozilla to learn more about Mozilla products and Mozilla let's say values بس وأهلا وسهلا فيكم إن شاء الله تنبسطوا اليوم طيب thank you so much I and Dua uh, so now we will start with Fabian. Okay, we are already 16. It's fine. We can start now. Uh, hi, Fabian. Hi, Mama. Hi. Uh, can you please start by introducing yourself and then sure. the topic? Yes, yes. So first of all, thank you for having me. It's great. Um, yeah, to, to just bounce back with what you said, I, as, as you know, uh, I speak just English. So I got some words here. There, uh, but if you know, can you? I'll put a bit louder the microphone. Huh? Can you hear anything at all? Actually, uh, yes, we can, yes we can hear you, but but I think you can raise your voice or fix your mic so that is it better now? I think it's yeah. better. Yes, is it better now? Mm -hmm. Okay, if it goes down again, yeah, it's magic like it goes down again. I see it in my eyes, I'll hold the mouse that's crazy uh, anyways that's going to be fun so <laughs> i was saying that um, i had the pleasure uh, to meet you uh, your mama and aya a few weeks ago or months ago actually uh, in amsterdam for mozilla um, 
uh, how do you say, workshop, basically. And I even have a little postcard as a souvenir uh, <laughs> where we met. There was a lot of fun. It has um, basically on how to be a better tech speaker, which is how to share uh, your love for technology, but in a very practical manner. And uh, it's very important to me because I think VR, uh, virtual reality, is very exciting. It's a, an exciting medium, but if it's something that you can build, if it's something that you can customize, if it's something you can tweak, but if it's a black box, like a big device you put on your head, I think it's creepy. So I want people to understand how it works, and, uh, and then it starts to be interesting, fun, or important. So that's why I'm very grateful uh, that you organized the event and that you invite me to, to share a little bit of what I know, what I've worked on, what I discovered. Uh, and which leads me to what I actually do, uh, who I am. Uh, I'm French. I live in Belgium. I've been in Belgium for about 10 years now. Uh, it's, I like it. It's a good place to work and to live. And um, I work for basically uh, two organizations or three, and I will I will show it to you actually with my screen. So I'll try to share my screen. Um, so do you see my screen now? Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Okay, super. Uh, and you also see a little bit of matching, which is look my microphone that disappears. I don't touch anything, and it goes down. So that's going to. Uh, uh, make sure that all of you pay attention <laughs> and then if I forget you just let me know. So uh, first of all I'll have to show you this on my screen. This is all in 3D. Like the whole presentation is in a 3D world and I'll explain you um, how to do it basically. That's the goal basically is to say hey if you want to make your 3D world and meet in there uh, it's a relatively straightforward process. So uh, again, thanks for having me. A little bit about myself. So do you know what this is or where, where this uh, building is? I'll make it a bit bigger. Any idea? Belgium or Paris? Or, uh, is it in yeah. Belgium? Yes, yes, it's in Belgium. No, no idea. <laughs> so I'll I'll show you a little bit. Up, oh, it's the European Parliament. Uh, so this is one of the uh, places where you basically have uh, the different representatives, the uh, members of the European Parliament that get together and represent uh, the different countries in Europe between each other. Uh, uh, so I work there because in there there is the innovation service. And in this innovation service, uh, we play basically with new technologies so that we can be up to date, both in terms of workflow in the parliament uh, to see what makes sense, and also in terms of um, uh, challenges or risk. Because maybe, for example, we find that C uh, or that facial recognition should be used only in some context. So it's both in terms of exploring workflows and in terms of um, making sure it's safe, basically. So that's part of my, my work. Uh, the other thing I do is I work for UNICEF. UNICEF has an innovation fund, and the idea is um, to basically help entrepreneurs um, from developing countries to have a startup and uh, we invest hundred thousand dollars with one year of support basically so I was in uh, Ghana uh, a year ago more or less so I was giving a workshop on a frame uh, which is the Mozilla web VR work uh, to learn how we throw here um, on the bottom on the middle basically uh, with his startup he works on uh, developing VR content for education and he also uh, just a quick uh, note um, you can ask questions or you make remark anytime uh, it will be in English for me but I think Yamama can also help uh, if you prefer either to write and then she will translate it can be in French also, up to you, but yeah. 
that's my <laughs> limit uh, in JavaScript. Uh, finally, um, I also helped MEC 3D, which is a startup from Nigeria. Uh, and she also focuses on um, so helping children, of course, that's UNICEF mission, but helping children in high school. So I was showing uh, how open source uh, can help and again in terms of funding. And finally, why do I do all this? <laughs> Initially, uh, is because I have a bunch of notes. So I have um, my uh, paper notebooks like this, where I do uh, I write a bunch of notes on what I read. Uh, I also draw some uh, presentation or context or ideas or whatever. Uh, and those notes are useful for me when I work with your prototype, but they are um, they're stuck on my notebook, so I cannot easily share them with you. So I started to put everything online, all my ideas, not everything on a wiki. Um, but this wiki is very abstract, and I want it to be tangible so that I can grab my notes and move them around. So when I tried VR the first time, five years ago already, then I thought I can organize all my notes around me, grab my notes like posters, and have it as if it was in my room there. So I started to do this, and now this is uh, basically my work is to, you see on the top, basically, some notes and how I can organize them in space. So that's my, my own goal for VR, is to uh, organize my ideas, my notes, whatever. So that's, that's why I spend so much time learning the technology. Um, now I'll show you uh, two devices virtually, so we're not going to go in there because we can't see stuff. Uh, I don't know if anybody tried like the Google Cardboard. Um, so that's, that's a, an affordable way to do VR. So I have one there, uh, that MEC 3D, the startup there, it's better when it's right, uh, for UNICEF um, design which is basically made out of code, also uh, do it yourself. And then uh, you can unwrap it, take your phone and put your phone in the carton. And then if you have your content, then you can explore it with, uh, with the results. Uh, that's the good thing is it's a, uh, it's, a, it's cheap, basically, because it's just cotton and two lenses. What is expensive is the phone. So you need the phone, and that phone, the better it is, the more graphics you can put in. Uh, in terms of doing it yourself, that's the good thing is you can go to, um, what's the name? Um, wherever you buy glasses or lenses, and you can buy lenses like this. And just put cotton around, put them in front of your phone, and you have a VR device. You can only turn around, you cannot move in space, but as a way to experiment the medium, it's a, it's a pretty good start. The other way to do it, uh, which is like with a headset like this, or a headset like that, which is an Oculus Quest, uh, it's honestly it's better. <laughs> I will not uh, hide it. I think this kind of headset is really nice. The good thing is you don't need a mobile phone. Uh, the difficulty is you need to be able to buy it uh, in the sense that they don't sell it everywhere and you need to be able to ship it and everything. So, but then when you put it on, it just works. You don't need to uh, update your phone or whatever. And it has those little cameras there. I don't know if you can see them. One camera, two camera, three camera, four cameras. And then the device uh, uses those cameras to find its position in space, basically. Uh, so it's called inside out tracking. I'll show you a little bit here in the visuals. Uh, you can have inside out tracking here on the left, which is the device using the different cameras, uh, do some slam, and then basically one frame to the next find interesting feature points, so point of high contrast, like black and white, like behind my, you can see my eyes, if they don't move, then if you get further or closer away, then you know your relative position to my eyes or to a static object, let's say the wall or the curtains. And this way the device knows if they are getting closer or further apart, and then can infer its position. 
so that means that when you have a device like the Oculus Quest, uh, you can move around in space like this, rather than when you have the cardboard, you can only turn around. Um, and the very nice thing about this, let's say the Oculus Quest or uh, other, um, actually now most VR devices, uh, is that it works on the web. So for example, here, that's the Oculus browser. So if you buy the device straight up, you can already uh, browse the web. Now, of course, you can browse the normal web, like we see a YouTube video on the right, but that's pretty boring. You don't need a VR device for this. Uh, what's more interesting is what you see on the center, for example, which is 3D Worlds. Uh, and you can do the same with Firefox Reality. Uh, so just, just a little bit of clarification, uh, I'm a Mozilla tech speaker and I do uh, mention Mozilla products because I think, first of all, it's all open source. So you mean you don't like it, you can change it, you can customize it, you can help others to build it. Uh, so you can learn very efficiently and then it promotes an open web, uh, meaning that we can all improve those tools, feel that they are safe. So I think when you have uh, high tech or black boxes and you know how the software runs, it's not just an intellectual uh, nice things to have to learn, uh, but it's really it's the right thing in my opinion. So that's why I think it's pretty important to have those. Uh, and then you have a bunch of experiences, uh, but the most exciting part is that you can make your own experiences. So if you see this room here, it's actually the room where we are now roughly, where at least I am now. So I'll, I'll show you how it's done. Meaning that I go in Mozilla spoke, so I'll um, just do the whole process. Uh, you can log in, you can have your project, and then here I'll open the one, the room Fabian? that I designed just for us. Yeah. Excuse me, but someone asked if you can please like slow down while talking. Sure. Yeah, I get excited and then I speak faster. <laughs> Sorry no about worries. that. Um, so, so, I started Mozilla Spoke, uh, which as you can see on the top, it's a URL. So it means not only the content that I generated here is on the web, and of course it works on those VR devices. But the way to create it also works on the web. So I have my URL. I can share it to you uh, with you at the end so that you can also build on top of it. And then uh, you can use 2D assets. So for example, here, this is the poster of the event. And then you can just move it around, put it wherever you want. Uh, or you can just do Control Z and then cancel the last action. So if you're not used to 3D, it's going to be a little bit strange at the beginning to have those red, green, blue arrows, but then you get used to it basically. It's uh, positioning objects in space. And then you can of course, uh, uh, so this is a translation, just moving it, but because you're in 3D, the direction matters, you can also uh, turn them around so you can rotate and you can also have a grid so this way it means you rotate 45 degrees um, 90 degrees 180 or you can stop the grid and then you can just turn however you want so I can duplicate this asset with control D I can do with T to translate and then I have a copy there or to rotate, move it around, T to translate, etc., etc. So basically, I just showed with the poster uh, as a way to position assets around. It's relatively straightforward. At the very beginning, it might feel a bit strange, but you get used to it rather quickly. Uh, of course, if it's just yet another copy of the same one, it's not that interesting, and you will quickly notice when you start to work in 3D uh, for VR that 2D assets are pretty boring. So it's a lot more interesting if you do 3D objects. So I'll take a random person of the audience. So for example, Yamama. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me, like, give me your favorite animal? 
My favorite? Animal. Uh, um, cat. A cat. So I'll just search here. So Google Pony is um, the library of the assets. Because I'm not a designer, uh, as you can see from my slides, I cannot do anything pretty. So I can use actual modelers or 3D artists uh, who share their work with the right license. So usually Creative Commons. And then I have here at the bottom a different example of cats. So I think I like this one because it's low poly. I just grab it and drop it. So it's drag and drop. And then I can use the F key and then I focus on it. I do T to translate. And then I can bring it down. I'll move it a little bit. And then now, okay, I need to really adjust it before. And, okay, it's a bit too far. And I have a little cat in my skin. So it's not animated yet. Uh, it could be animated, but at least you start to position any kind of assets you want like this. And same, you can duplicate, move it around, or to rotate. And control S to save. So basically you can design your entire scene like this, meaning you import uh, 2D objects, like the poster that you design using GIMP. Uh, you can import 3D objects like the cat from Google Poly or Sketchfab also. It's another library of 3D assets. Got a lot of those. Uh, and you can, of course, import your own. So, for example, I'll move this to the side. And then I have here using Blender um, some different lanterns. And I can just take it, drag and drop. It will upload the asset uh, on the web. I can focus on it again. And then I can T for translate and move it around. I'll put it again full screen. So you can have either assets made by other people, uh, remote or on Poly or Sketchfab, or you can design your own using Blender. Honestly, if you're not familiar with Blender, I don't recommend it because it's a lot of work. Um, if you need to design your own cat in 3D, like this, you think, oh, it's a simple cat that's going to be quick. Well, yeah, <laughs> it honestly is difficult, uh, especially to do a pretty one. So I really recommend when you start to use all those uh, Google Poly assets, you design something that looks like this relatively quickly, uh, and you can fork or replicate existing themes for existing scenes rather. Uh, so Fabian, can we, so can we pause and ask the questions? Sure, sure. So, um, Aram, are you here? Do you want to ask you the question yourself? Aram? Okay, Aram sent a question. If we have a 3D environment yeah. full of 3D objects, how can we transform it yeah. into VR? Um, and which program can we use to accomplish that? Uh, so, yeah. And if she had an object created by Maya, can she use it in this platform? Yes. Okay. So, uh, if I forget the first, I will reply to the first question first. Uh, the standard for 3D models on the web is called GLTF. Uh, yeah. And it's supported by most uh, 3D software now. Um, so you can see, I don't know who made my is it Autodesk? I don't remember, but I mean, you see Autodesk, you see Adobe, you see Nvidia, you see Mozilla, Microsoft, Oculus, Unity, uh, the Web3D Consortium, Blender, uh, Sketchfab, a lot of software. So I'm pretty sure uh, there is, a, I don't use Maya, 
So then 99% ah, Maya is here. Okay, voila. So yes, you can use Maya as the short version. Uh, it's the new standard for 3D on the web. Now, if you want to bring it to VR, so I don't show you all this just for 3D. So it's good that she asked that question is because after this, you can use it in VR. So here I'm uh, in the world in, um, how do you say, on my desktop. But if I had my VR uh, headset connected now, uh, I could just click on the bottom right button here, there would be a VR button. So let me just, here I do share an example. And then on, on my VR uh, headset, I can connect on this hub.link. So I go in the browser. Uh, I will not do it there because you can't see anything. So you'll just have to trust me that it works, but it does. And then on the hub.link, if you put this URL, then, uh, or if you put this code rather, then you can just join directly in VR. So this whole world done in spoke. So I'll do the process with you. I close here, I save it. Uh, someone asked if this is a free or you pay for the service or to be able to, if all of this is a free. Everything is free. Yes. So it's free of cost. You don't pay uh, for it. There's also open source software. Uh, I think it's all Mozilla license and you can modify it. So for example, we have Mozilla Spoke. Oops. The browser is free so Firefox uh, you can make it open source uh, hubs I think it might be on another repository uh, so that's the browser Firefox reality all free uh, and open source Mozilla license uh, spoke so that's the 3d editor uh, that's as I was showing. Uh, also, uh, oh, license. Oh, MIT license, so it's more permissive. Uh, so yes, you can modify too, and then uh, it saves. It takes a bit of time, a bit of suspense, so we can have more questions. Um, okay. Yes, the, everything I'm showing, I'm only showing. Yeah, tell me. Yes, the question is, do they need to install any program? Nope, it's everything on the web. That's honestly, this is very exciting to me because uh, when I give workshops, I don't want people to install, let's say, Blender or Unity because nobody uh, comes to the workshop prepared. Everybody just show up. Uh, so if you can just click a link, I'll, uh, let me put them on the chat actually. So how do I go back to the chat? From here. You want to end? No. Uh, chat. Yeah. Cool. No. Uh, no. I'm clicking all the buttons. And what are you looking for? The, right the chat. You, it is in the main panel in the bottom of the screen. You may need to stop sharing, I don't know. Mm, I don't you know, you're right. It's when I go here and then I go the more and chat. Okay, so here, so the link to spoke, so the, the scene editor is there with uh, the repository. Spoke. Uh, and then, ah yes, okay, there was one. And then I create a room with this scene. So that's the new scene I edited with the cat. Uh, and then I enter the room with my microphone. And then if I go all the way there, up. You will have the cat there in the lab that I just added like minutes ago. And now I will try to show you on the device, but I think with the camera that's going to be very difficult. 
So I think we'll see. Maybe what I can do, uh, because I need to prove that it works in VR. Otherwise, uh, as uh, you ask, then is it only for 3D? No, no, it's really for the headset. Uh, so I will go. So now on the device, I mean uh, Firefox Reality, but it also works with the stock browser, the Oculus browser. Uh, and it also works with VR on desktop. Okay, uh, and then the code is 182 and 874. 874. So it opens there. Actually, it's fun because you're going to see me now in VR uh, appearing there if everything goes well. So cross your fingers for me, please. Uh, it's a lot of objects too. And then I will try to mirror on my phone so that see, ah, we can see at the bottom that I joined. And so far, so good. It always works, except when I try to show it. So if it doesn't work, don't worry about it. Just unlucky. Uh, connecting. Ah, yeah, super. Can you see on my screen now? Yes, like your phone. Um, yep, on my phone, you can see what I see on the device. So I enter the room. Uh huh. They can try it themselves, no? Yes, you can actually try it there, but uh, you see. You see my hand, but you see the screen on the desktop. Up. You see the hand? Yes. <laughs> on the webcam? Okay. So, and yes, and you see also on the desktop that uh, I'm moving my head there with the headset. Uh -huh. And then it shows on the... Um, uh, on, a, on the desktop because it's all networked. So it's using WebRTC. So it means the room that I created here in Spoke, I saved it, I published it, and then I was able to join in VR. Uh, and then I could see the result there. Does it make sense? Yes. Um, oh. We have a question. Yeah. Also from Aram. She said, if we have a lot of objects, can the web handle all of them or should we make them low poly? It's a challenge, uh, I think. So the web, <laughs> the, the, the web in itself is not really a problem. The problem is your GPU. So basically, because everything here is running on WebGL. So I mean, if you have a big graphic card, then it's going to run okay. If you have, uh, you know, using the phone, or a standalone headset, then of course, if, if your asset, your 3D model is one gigabyte, it's going to be difficult. Uh, but it still runs okay. For example, I can show you this room, which is using photogrammetry. So photogrammetry, the technique to generate 3D objects, instead of doing low poly, you just take a lot of photos of uh, uh, an object, a sculpture, or uh, of a building, a house, or whatever. Uh, and then it makes geometry that are rather complex and heavy. And even that works well on the web. So here I'm showing you another room, also in hubs. Uh, and you see this is all a 3D model. So there's a, I can just fly. And then So that's a 3D model generated by cameras. Okay, even so the environment. rather complex. Tell me. I, I understand that each object you get from the hubs, but for to build the environment, like the walls and the, the floor and the place that you are in, you also do all this using the hubs or it is um, existed model? No, no, no. Well, it's a mix. I think hubs is really good to organize in space. Let's say to move this object 
you can to uh, organize really. Um, but then to create them, uh, if you were going to use Maya or Blender or 3D Studio Max or something fun also, is if you have your headset is to do it directly in VR. So there is, for example, Tilt Brush. Um, I'll just put a video. Well, you can directly paint in VR. Uh, yeah. So you can draw. Okay. Okay. This has been drawn directly in VR. So using the controller, you can directly paint there. The brushes for the round for the track, everything. So you can do the content in VR, but otherwise, yes, you can use Blender. So let's imagine that now I start Blender. Uh, I do a new file, the cube in Blender, my favorite object. Then I can just do export, GLTF. I'll export in uh, uh, hubs, let's say, cube. Uh, it did not work because I have a bug, but anyway, let's imagine that it worked um, using Blender, then my GLTF, um, I would just drag and drop it. The same way here, I have the GLB exported before. So there are different ways to, uh, to go from 3D um, to hubs or spoke then hubs or make your own scene. Uh, another way to do it, if you don't want it social, is using, for example, a framework like A-Frame. Uh, if you want to program it yourself without anything social, that's a good way to do it. Um, one example with the GLTF would be, um, I don't know if there was some actually here. So you have primitive like this, uh, and you can see the code, it's relatively simple. Your source. So this is what you have in the code, and this is what you get as a result. But instead of having those primitive, a box, a sphere, a cylinder, a plane here, it's all in 3D. What you can do is have instead a GLTF object. So GLTF. That's why I insisted a bit before regarding GLTF uh, is because really that's the new format for 3D on the web. And instead of having your code here to have a box, a sphere, everything, then you put your 3D model, like a URL. One that is a little bit silly, but I'll show you. If I go on my web page, uh, on the front, I have a, a 3D model of me. With little heart because it's very cute. Uh, so that's just um, an A-frame page and then I have a uh, object model or a Colada model so those are URL to 3D models and then I position in space this position and then I choose the size. So that's another way you can use um, spoke and then hubs or you can use A-frame with GLTF models, so I'm going to put that also in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we ask a question? Yeah. Okay, uh, Naima, Nasma, Nasma asked if we can really move using the headsets inside the place. Like, can you uh, explain the experience? How can I uh, put a headset and then move, and then I feel that I'm moving inside the, the space itself? No, I cannot explain it. <laughs> you have to live it. It's very difficult. I mean, of course, I can explain it technically to you how it works, but basically, I will, I'll demonstrate. Huh? Um, so I'll go back to the space where I was. I'll open all this back. Um, closing all that. So I enter the room, put myself in mute. So I'll do a little demonstration. So you still see my screen, right? Yes. 
Okay, I will re enter in BR. So you see, you, you see me on the, no, you don't see me. Okay. You see my avatar, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. So what I will do is uh, I'll just stand up. Okay. So you see me moving my hands on the webcam and uh, in hubs. Uh, oh, I don't I don't know. And then I'll I can teleport there or I can move around with the joystick, but otherwise I can just move like this. So I move my entire body. And then uh, you see me closer there. <laughs> and then if I step back, you see me moving around. Uh huh. Does it prove it? <laughs> yes. So you move in the actual world. Uh, we can, you move in the virtual world, but this is not with all the headsets. Only with the, the expensive uh, ones. So it, it, well, so this is four hundred dollars more or less, uh -huh. 400 euros. So it's expensive, but if you compare to a phone, uh, like now there are quite a few phones that are $100, uh, there are $1,000, but it's not, let's say, uh, it's not a $1,000 phone. So it's not cheap, but um, this is, just to be uh, clear, this is $400, but before that was $100,000. So it's a lot and a lot cheaper, and we can imagine that the price is going to keep on going down. Uh, but it's true that if you have um, there are cheaper headsets like this, like the Oculus Go, and the Oculus Go is basically just like the cardboard, you can only turn around, but you cannot move back and forth. You cannot walk in the room. Those are just, just to turn the head, which is always cool, but uh, it, it's definitely not as good because you, you cannot grab objects, move around. It's not as dynamic. Uh -huh. We also have another question. Yeah. Can, can we build the environment from pictures? Um, what kind of pictures? Because uh, you can do photogrammetry like I showed before, where you had the, the brown room kind of, but for this you need like thousands and thousands of pictures. Uh, I'll just put uh, photogrammetry. I'll, I'll put the process in, um, in the chat. So you can you can use it, but it's a uh, it's a lot of work really. Uh, otherwise, what you can do, of course, is um, in here I can make a new project, for example. So I'll go in Spoke. I just, what what I like about Spoke is basically it's all visual. Uh, you don't need to uh, program anything. You still can if you want, but as a way to begin, I think it's the the best way to begin. So I'll just use the empty space. Um, okay, I did not prepare that question, so I'm going to try a solution, which is I'm going to take a photo of my wall. Let's say, ah, let's say there. Um, I'm going to send it to myself on Telegram. Uh, I think like this. I download it. Then I go in my downloads and then I drop it. It uploads it. I focus. Uh, it's a bit too small, so I zoom. Oh, I scale it. Up. 
and then uh, I duplicate it, rotate it, uh, and then I translate it again. A bit too small, so I'll make it five units. So the unit are the met met meters, meters. I don't know how to say that right. Up. So I'm, I'm trying to show <laughs> one way to answer that question. Uh, and I rotate it again, translate, uh, duplicate, so D, and then I rotate it. Okay, I save it. So just use in photos, yes, you can do a room or you can do a scene, but it's going to be, of course, uh, pretty limited. Uh, it should work. So, of course, as a way to start, it's good. And it's also very geometric. Uh, let's see. When I say it should work, it should. But, of course, with live uh, test, we're never sure. So I create my room. And very sarcastically, it called it superb area. Uh, voila. Voila. So you have a room made out of photos. And you can feel a little bit as if you were next, next to me, except I. Don't have grass on the stop now. So uh, uh, anyone click the link on the chat can go to this room and join Fabian yes. in the room. They will choose their own character and then become uh, someone inside the room. No? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, you can also customize the avatar. So if I go in a uh, set name and avatar, then I have this, but I have others. Um, so some I design myself, which again, I'm not a designer, so you can accept. And then I can see the list of people who get there, but so far people are in the lobby. So you can, uh, you can really join the room after. Don't just stay in the lobby. I think there is end to scene, but ah, hello. I'm, I'm Jad. <laughs> <laughs> and I can, I will try to enter also I'll try to end. <laughs> We're running after each other. Um, ah, hello. Mufid is here too. Yeah. And we can put the sound. I'm not going to put my microphone because otherwise there'll be some uh, echo. But, uh, <laughs> and I can also add some um, uh, content. Uh, I'll put some 3D content. Hopla. Uh, create. And then, for example, uh, voila. you can put 3D objects also after once the room has already, already been done. Hello. <laughs> People explain. So wait, what we can do, uh, so everybody who is in the room, try to come next to the astronaut. Uh, let's come around here. And then there is a... I'll, I'll put it here. Up. Wait, please. Yep. Come here. I mean, uh, and then you have other options, like, um, for example, to take photos. So you have a camera like this. It's really hard to rotate things in view. I mean, it's hard when you're not in view. Voila. And then we can take a photo. Ah, come back. Well, 
and then it generates a photo, a little selfie of uh, us in VR. And then I can tweet it. Uh, and it's, uh, it's Palestine Tech Meetups, right? Yes. Okay, let's see. And just an example that they are also um, like the social aspect outside of VR, so that if you do an event like this, you can promote it uh, live and voila. <laughs> and so, so anyone can join the room from Twitter. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, actually true. That's true. I forgot about it. Well, yeah, I should have thought about it before, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, it, I think it's a, it was a basically a complete example from an empty room to photos taken here to simplify uh, adding a 3D object, uh, having people join in to show it social, and then having a photo of it. And like I said, I could have the um, join also with the headset, but then you don't see uh, me and I can't chat easily with you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you so much, Fabian. We have a lot of a question. So drink water and get ready. Um, I will start from... Someone asked if we need to do programming. I think you answered this. So, yeah, you don't need to do programming because as I showed you now, from photos to all the way to sharing tweets on uh, Twitter in a social, or I mean, in a networked way, I did not write one line of code. Now, if you are a programmer and you want to build on top of it, I put the GitHub links in the chat, but you can also do something new. I discovered that last week. Uh, you can do uh, live coding in, uh, in hubs directly. So for example, now I'm in the console, I'll zoom it a bit. You can actually do uh, social live coding in VR. So not with the headset, but so I'm in Firefox and then I list the different so the GLTF object, but I mentioned the 3D objects, uh, and then I can see um, some properties of them. So I'll take one of those. I don't know um, which one they are actually, I can check there, but it's a little bit tricky. So I'll just take one randomly, but I'm a little bit lazy with the time today. So I'll take the sixth one, and then uh, I'll take some of its properties. So for example, its position. Uh, yeah. So this one is at the origin place, so zero, 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 and then I can uh, take its X property, and then I can put it, uh, I can set it to something else. So now I set it, and normally something moved. The thing is, I don't know where it is. Uh, I think it was the, the this wall that was a little bit closer. Uh, but to be sure, I'll make fly, something fly. So what was it? <laughs> one object in their mood, I don't know which one it is. That's a little uh, problem. But anyway, so you can do uh, you can do it in VR, or you can do it outside, of course, of VR using components. Ah. Have but does the hubs give you the permission to 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 modify the code permanently it's just the console no uh, so yeah the console means it's going to be just running live now but if you want to modify hubs what you're going to have to do is to have an instance of hubs uh, but they have you can deploy using aws for example. Mm -hmm. and you have the whole stack for hubs there um, it's it's uh, it's pretty demanding to be honest in terms of uh, all the different components uh, backend wise, but it works well. So you can uh, program for hubs if you want to. You can program in hubs like I was just doing, uh, and you can also do it in a frame. You can do it using uh, Babylon JS. Uh, there are a lot of different frameworks to do um, web VR. Mm -hmm. So another question from Mufid. Mufid asked, tell us that there are many, um, many programs that we can install and do and combine 3D models um, together, but looks like most of them is not on the web. So this is the difference. Um, 
Mufid, can you uh, please so explain your question? Uh, yeah. uh, can I speak? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, what I want to explain, uh, instead of taking taking a picture of your room, uh, you can install uh, apps uh, from Google Play or App Store. There is a lot of apps that can do uh, 3D scan. Uh, so you can scan your room and extract a 3D model from pictures. Uh, yeah, that's it. A uh, suggestion? Yeah, yeah. I think there is room.ai or something like this. No, it's another one. But there, there are a couple of, usually those are based on photogrammetry. Uh, it, it works, but the result is, um, it's not necessarily what you have in mind and in terms of performance, it's not necessarily uh, ideal. So I would recommend, uh, I mean, it depends on the style also you want, but to use low poly to design either from, uh, to get from uh, Google Poly, Sketchfab, or if you're a modeler, to design them yourself. Uh, but it depends entirely of the style of your experience, of the performance of the target platform, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Orjuan, if you want to ask you the question, you can speak. Okay. Yeah, hi. Hi, Hi, Erdogan. Yes. Uh, yeah. We cannot hear I you. Hear. Can you hear me now? Better, but not yeah. better. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, my is, uh, about my work, I'm a designer of an artist. How can I? Uh, we are sorry, Erdogan. Looks like you have problem in your mic. Okay, can you ask it, uh, Mama? Yes, yes. So Orjuan asks, uh, as, uh, as a normal person, how can I get benefit from this service, from the social VR or from the Mozilla Hubs? How can I get like a tangible benefit? How, how can I enroll VR in my normal day? This, is, this was her question. Um, well, I don't know if I'm a normal person or not, but that's okay. Um, if you don't, you don't need, the headphone the headsets to have it working that's also why i gave the link uh, and i can see you see on the top right of my screen that nobody here me included has a vr headset so it works on a normal computer it also works with the phone so you don't need it it's just much better with a headset but it's not required um, do you need it i don't know to be honest, I, I don't know. It depends indeed what you work, what you want to focus on, what you want to develop. I'm not saying everybody needs VR. Uh, I'm just saying it's a possibility. Uh, it works today. You can have uh, different kind of solutions. You don't need to see the latest device. Uh, and all that content you can create, customize yourself. You can expand, build on. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, with for social VR or this, um, the, I can tell you how I use it, but it's not necessarily the same for everybody. Uh, it can be like to go dance. Some people go dance in VR. Uh, it could be for video games. Um, it can be for creating and painting. Uh, it can be to organize your documents like I'm doing. It can be for meeting. If you want to use something else than Zoom, uh, you can also do it in uh, VR. Uh, so there are lots of different usage. Uh, and also, I don't want to give more than example in the sense that it's a new medium. So if you have idea on how to do something else differently and better, uh, I think that's the most interesting use case. Uh, um, being a developer, being an artist or a designer, or organizing events like this. Uh, I think one of the most exciting usage actually for me uh, is to give workshops in VR. Um, so normally the way I would do it is no Zoom, just Mozilla Hubs, and then um, to share my screen and do live coding in VR, uh, or rather about VR in VR, so that people can see, uh, because you can do sc screen sharing also in Hubs. So I would share my screen, people would be around me, behind me, and then I would change their environment in VR. So that, for example, uh, if people want to learn programming, they don't learn by doing uh, a normal website, but just 
doing 3D and socially. I think that's the most, to me, exciting use. Uh, Yamama, yeah, you're on mute. No, if you're talking to... Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Aram asks, what is the differences from open simulator? Um, so open sim, as far as I remember, um, was not web-based. Uh, it was created like 10 years ago or something uh, and was focusing on simulation. So to run things that are representing real world behavior. Uh, this, is for, this is on the web focusing on VR first. Uh, meaning even though you don't need the headset, uh, it is better if you have one. Uh, and there is no simulation aspect. Uh, it can be realistic or like I was uh, showing before, uh, you can fly, but you can have other uh, behavior that are completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's um, there are things that are respect to it. Maybe there are bridges even, maybe you can export from OpenSIM to Hubs or to GLTF and A-Frame or, mm -hmm. or Babylon GS. Thank you so much, Fabian. Anyone has more, any, any more question? So, okay, um, uh, Fabian, do you have any addition? Um, no, just uh, you can also reach me on Twitter if uh, you have all the questions, because I know sometimes it takes a bit of time to uh, to uh, digest all this, all the different tools and everything. I suggest you you have a go at it. Uh, you try. In VR, if you can, either or. Uh, so the, the first step, they should visit hubs.mozilla.org and start their own experience. Yes, for example, or spoke uh, like I gave on the um, on the chat. I think is nice. Uh, I think it's probably better to start to play with spoke because this way you create your world, so you have a bit of a, a sense of agency. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I would start with. I'll put it again in the chat. Uh, yeah, and I'll put my Twitter account too. Uh, um, I want to add something about something I used on Spoke. They have something called the architecture kit. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a very cool thing, like for the architecture people who build things. It gives you like the materials and the, everything you need as an architect to build your own. You can you can build um, a house or something that looks like a real house using this kit. Yep. I think this is an application for people who, who work on architecture, who do modeling for houses. It's very easy and it's on the web. No need for AutoCAD, for example, or to install like yes. heavy programs. For example, here, if I'm, I'm back in my little experience with my walls, I'll just delete them all. So I can just grab them, delete, and then I go in architecture kit. Mm -hmm. And then it has, um, like, I'll put the floor. So just drag and drop, control D. Actually, I think even the floor, it, uh, it's easier than, like, you can just uh, go translate. Yeah. And then I duplicate it, duplicate it. I can also um, select again all those, duplicate all four. Uh, then I can take the wall. And also, yeah, this one completes actually, so it's even faster. Uh, and I can have a wall with a window. Uh, then I need to rotate it because it's the wrong side. 
So yeah, this this is also a very good way to do it. You're right, uh, Yamama. It's um, this way you don't have to use images and you don't even have to import from a uh, sketch lab. Uh, and if I just zoom a little bit, uh, yeah, you can have very simple for now. <laughs> but uh, and then I duplicate, rotate, translate. Duplicate, duplicate, rotate. Anyway, you will have fun without me on this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's really fun to do this. You can add your posters, uh, especially again when you were stuck yes. at home. It's a nice way to, uh, to change your mind. Uh, up, duplicate, rotate. Uh, if uh, you're I need very cheat familiar sheet. with Blender, you don't need it. Do the hubs have any mm, cheat sheets? I don't sheets think so. Or I uh, like no. Um, there is, there is also yeah. Well, there is hub shortcuts. I think uh, documentation. I remember there is a page for it, and there is one page also for hubs uh, for a spoke. But uh, to get a gag. no, I forget where it is, but. You will find it using your favorite search engine. Wow. And you can group. Uh, one last thing about also this is uh, you can you can group objects together. So for example, if I take here the whole uh, all my world, I just select it all, and then I uh, I do Control G or group, and then uh, I have a hierarchy. So when you have a complex um, Scene, I really recommend to do this, and also because after you can, for example, translate and you translate the group rather than selecting one by one. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very efficient. What about? You can also just duplicate the whole group, uh, move it up. You can have multiple, you can scale the whole group also. Um, so you can cancel, cancel, take the group, zoom or scale, and then you so have something. Um, having having this kit, can we say that the hubs is used for modeling? In, in it, yes, yeah. It's it more, I would say, uh, like organizing thing or agents, um, spatial agencing than modeling. To me, modeling is more like really if you go for one polygon or another and mm -hmm. make this uh, those objects. Let's see. I'm just asking is uh, as, uh, asking about the differences between a Max program Maya and the hubs. But uh, we answered this before, but we can answer. You can answer it again. Sure, sure. So uh, in Maya. Let's say you would do this uh, burger, um, and in hubs you put it somewhere in space. So you organize the space, and also big difference with the uh, or spoke rather is uh, you make it dynamic. So in Maya you make the 3D model that you import in in spokes or hubs, but then after that you can do this, which is this waypoint, which is where the person when they start the experience will begin, and then you can save and publish to hubs. This you cannot do with Maya. You cannot publish a scene directly and make people, invite people to join in. Mm -hmm. So that's a big difference between uh, Maya, which is for modeling to create the object and in Spoke to make it socially shareable. That's why the, the, the title of the talk was about social VR is the, everything here done today or proposed to done is so that you can have a link at the end. That's the special aspect to it, to say, hey, it's not a GLTF um, and install an app or whatever. It's this link, and uh, I'll, I can share it again here just to uh, try um, if people want to join. And then in here, uh, we are in this room, uh, and then I can share it wherever. I can share it back again on Twitter, and people can join. So this is not something that's possible otherwise in Maya.
and I can do things like this. I'll just take a link here. So you can link between different rooms. Uh, oh, that was the previous one. That's okay. The room. And then, then I paste the link. And here I have a link to the other room. And I can put some text right here. And in case if people go on Twitter and they go to the old room, they're going to teleport here to the new room. So yeah, that, that's something that's not possible with uh, Blender or Maya alone. Mm -hmm. And again, here we join with the desktop or with our phone because it's more convenient. But uh, I'll just join in VR to uh, so 596347. Just to uh, remind everybody why we're here in the first place that it's the VR aspect. Because it's, it's only, only show uh, with my desktop and the shared screen because it's more convenient. But in practice, the goal is to have, or the, the end goal, whenever possible, is to have something like this. Uh, so I forget again. Five, nine, six, three, four, seven. Five, nine, six, three, four, You can see that question if there are some because I can hear you. But we cannot see you. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll go just there. And then, and then um, um, what's funny? Yeah, I should oh, have a bit of echo. Bit of echo. Hello, I can I ask you? I think we should mute something. There is something wrong. Yeah, I me. can't. I hear. No, no, it's me. Uh, okay, I think now it's okay. No. Better. Yeah. So I tried, I went on the... Uh, uh, Fabian, can you mute time. the hubs? Can you mute the hubs so we hear you once through Zoom? And now it's okay? Ah, yes, it's better now. So I, I imported a, a cat from VR. And then I can uh, grab it. And then I can pet it. And it's something, this kind of manipulation uh, in 3D, if, uh, if you do modeling in Maya or, or in Blender, whatever, this is very difficult because you're rotating the screen at the same time and uh, you're uh, scaling it or rotating. Uh, so you can have a giant cat. You can probably ride on it, like if it was a horse, but anyway. Okay. So I'm just saying cat because it's cute, but of course uh, it could be a, a car, a house, or whatever you work on. Uh, it can be a little bit more serious. And uh, do we have a limited number for pers for people who can join the room? Um, I think I, I've been in rooms uh, with like 40 persons uh, and that was okay, but uh, it's not made for like a hundred person it's for uh, let's say 10, 20, let's say mm -hmm. 50 maximum and as, after that it becomes difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. 
Okay. So for people who ask from where they can see the recorded session, we will publish the, the video on the Palestine TM Facebook page and the Twitter account. We also will post it on the Facebook Developer Circles group. You will find the video easily. Anyone has more question? Any addition, any suggestion? Any comment? <laughs> Critics. Fabian, if you want to add something, okay. Thank you a lot. They are. <laughs> Thank you, Osama. Um, Thank you, Fabian. We enjoyed this session. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So your, your, what is your call for action? Go to hubs.mozilla.org. Go, uh, go on, go on spoke first. So I'll, uh, I'll put the link there. Go there, create something, share with friends. Okay. Voila, that's my call to action indeed. <laughs> It, it's really, honestly, it's, it's a lot of fun to do. It's fun to do it also because you do it with friends, with colleagues, uh, even with strangers. Um, and then they can give you criticism, build on top of it. Uh, and if you want to do modeling, you can do it. If you want to do programming, you can do it. If you want to party, you can do it. If you want to do music, you can do it. Overall, I think it's really fun, but especially now when like I'm stuck in at home, it's even more, Fun, how <laughs> important uh, and yeah zoom works and we can see our face and everything but we can be a little bit more creative than that so yeah just just share the fun around your program that's up uh, so there's a lot to do with this thank you so much fabian we really enjoyed this session and we hope that many more will come and maybe next time you come to palestine and give 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 us a physical session I, that's my hope. That's what I want to do right now. As we all know, it's a little bit difficult, but uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's the plan. Uh, because I I want I don't want just to show the headset. Oh, no, it works like this and everything. I want people to have the first time to see uh, how it works, to uh, to show me what they've built. So yeah, let's do this. Let's do a proper workshop whenever the situation is back to normal. Sure, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. So last call for, for questions. Thank you so much, Fabian. It was our pleasure having you. Thank you everyone for attending and hope we will see you next sessions, another sessions. Bye. Bye. Bye.